Hey guys, welcome back to Recreational Sniper. Tonight, I've got a little bit of an unboxing for you <clears throat> and a little bit of an update on the AR-10. I'm getting into my first LPVO optic setup. And what I have here is the Athlon Ares ETR UHD. And this is a one to 10 by 24 first focal plane rifle scope. Anyways, here's our owner's manual. Go ahead and pull this thing out of here. And just take a look at it here. So we got our elevation turret up on top. We got a, a locking elevation turret so the cap pops up and then you can turn it back and forth. And you can probably hear that that's really nice audible clicks there. And then it just snaps back down. Now the windage turret is actually capped. It's uh, covered, but it's also as well really nice quality, really tactile, really quite stiff but smooth. Same thing with the elevation. I would say the elevation turret is a little bit easier to turn than the windage one, but um, your windage turret is not locking, so it kind of makes sense that they would make that one a little bit harder to turn just in case it got bumped off track. Now we do have an illuminated reticle and it's got zero illumination in between every setting, so six would be full power. And I don't know, maybe I can get that to work for you guys. Of course, it's not focused at all. We're on a obviously a very short background here so I'll take this out and get us a better footage on that later but you could you could clearly see that it was turned on there um, again it's 1 to 10 power so there's all the way turn it 10 back to 1 the parallax is set for 100 yards now for the purpose of this scope having a mill scale reticle actually is more geared towards long range than most LPVOs because most LPVOs have uh, what you would call bullet drop compensating reticles in it and this does not. This actually has a full Christmas tree type reticle and I'll show you that here pretty quick. So the reticle in this one looks like this. At full, at zoomed in on you know on 10 power, this is what you look like in your in your scope. So down here in the bottom, you've got your ranging scale for like a standard um, silhouette silhouette target, and then you've got your mill scale uh, Christmas tree kind of thing going on. You got your illuminated center dot, and then your illuminated ring around it, and. Uh, and that sort of thing. So the other version of this has an MOA setup, but it's got a bullet drop compensating reticle. And I know this is kind of probably a little bit hard to see. It does have the same ranging type reticle in the bottom, but instead of this being an MOA scale, this is actually bullet drop compensating and it's geared towards either a 69 or 68 grain boat tail hall point match for 556. So the MOA version, if you go with that, just know that it's really geared towards 5.56 for the BDC uh, portion of the reticle. If you go with the mill scale reticle, it's a true mill scale, and you can actually use this for, you know, uh, calculating your holdovers, or, you know, if you need to hold over any, you can actually use this. Uh, specifically for any cartridge you just kind of do got to do a little extra math with it but I prefer mine to be this way I don't like BDC's at all because they only work with like I said one specific bullet and 
like this one here it's really only designed to work with either a 68 or 69 grain boat tail hollow point whereas if you use a mill scale reticle you'll be able to use this and it will be effective for any cartridge any bullet that you want to use now we can talk about a little bit more of the physicalness of this it is a 34 millimeter main body tube so it's pretty large and it's pretty hefty this comes in at about 27 ounces i think 26.9 ounces is what they say it, it runs uh, so it's kind of heavy um, and it's got a 24 millimeter objective lens so it's big and heavy and heavy duty built like uh, this thing is a tank um, I've not found very many reviews on how tough and what kind of wear and tear these things will take but uh, for an optic and its price point um, you get really really good glass and uh, from what I understand really really good uh, turret tracking which I'm going to find out I'll be testing that um, also in the box you get the standard you get a lens cleaning call uh, cloth um, you get a little wrench here with a couple extra set screws I guess in case you lose something and then you get your scope caps so your ocular cap and your objective lens cap and then you also get an oversized throw lever for back here now I personally think this is plenty much a throw lever for me um, maybe if I was in a high speed scenario, I might want a little more leverage and I could easily just put that on there, but yeah, so that's pretty much, that's what you get in there. Um, you get Athlon's lifetime warranty. So if anything happens to this thing, if it quits tracking or gets fog in it or something, you can just uh, send it back to them and they'll fix it or replace it. No questions asked, no problem. So pretty cool which I'm not going to worry with packaging this back up because I'm actually about to put this on a rifle. All right, guys. The second thing is, is we got this cool scope here now. We got a nice, decent scope with really nice glass and everything. We need a good mount to place this thing in. So, I bought my first spur mount the ISMS ideal scope mount system from Spur got our instruction manual here with gives us our torque values and that sort of thing so pretty standard stuff you get with any scope mount we get now one thing that is a little different with this uh, we'll get into that here in just a second but uh, get a package full of screws and our its own driver bit and then you get the main body of the mount here and as you can see in this one this is a 13 mil or 44.4 MOA base so this thing is actually this is set up for long range. This is going to get me way out there. And I bought it that way on purpose, and I will get to that here in just a little while. But uh, it kind of has to do with taking my AR-10 out past 1,400 yards, or at least being able to do that if I want it to. I'm going to need some extra elevation. So I got this 13 mil base here. Now what's cool about the spur mounts is they come with a level built into them and that kind of helps out with long range stuff. And then of course we got our scope caps. Now for you guys that don't know, the reason why spur makes their mounts this way and a lot of people don't understand or, you know, there's a very specific reason, you know, they don't build just really expensive mounts, uh, you know, and charge a lot of money for them for no reason. But um, the deal is, is when you've got your scope mount set up and normally your top of your ring would be set like this, right? Um, and it would, 
interfere with your line of sight to the uh, elevation dial and the same thing with the windage dial on the side so what they decided to do was do them offset at a 45 degree angle and that way they've got this nice flat clean surface you can look at your elevation dial and then over here on the side you've got a nice flat clean surface you can see your windage and also your parallax and or illumination as far as most scopes are concerned. So that's the reason why Spur makes their mounts this way. They didn't make them looking goofy for just because they wanted to be different. They actually had an intelligent purpose for this and it's something that other scope mount companies do not do. Um, also on these you'll see where it actually has your sequence of how you should torque these down on on your rail but yeah there you go that's your spur mount there um the most expensive scope mount i probably will ever buy <laughs> to say the least but uh after holding this thing in my hands and looking at it i kind of understand the reason why they do the things they do and I, honestly it makes me kind of want a couple more of them for some of my other rifles okay so this little weird wedge thing this is actually for leveling your scope and the way this works get our scope back out here so the way this will work is if you got your scope in the mount here like this this wedge you would fit up underneath right here in this slot and it's designed so that it goes against the bottom surface of this scope here that's completely flat if you see what I'm talking about but against this bottom surface and that's how you would level your scope in the mount now it's kind of con some controversial stuff with that. Some people say this thing works great. Some people like it. Some people say that it doesn't work very good for them and they end up having to level it the old, the old school way uh, that everybody else has been doing it for a long time. But as you can see, this uh, wedge here is actually slanted. So it tapers up and it's designed for that purpose. So anyways, we're going to throw this on the AR-10 and kind of talk about the reason why I needed a 13 mil mount to go with this scope, but pretty much has to do with long range. Uh, being able to get real far out there. All right, so let me grab the rifle and we'll get to it. All right, guys, so currently on my AR-10, this is what I've got going on. I've got the Arkin SH4 Gen 2 on here. And I did that for the purpose of I wanted to kind of really see how tight of groups that this thing shot. So what this rifle is is a 16 inch 6.5 Creedmoor AR-10 that I built. I did take this rifle out this past weekend and I went and shot some groups so on this first target here this is at 100 yards i was still i was trying to get this thing kind of dialed in wasn't quite there yet so this group this first group looks like shit but um i've kind of after that uh these are all five shot groups so the next group looks like this it's not too bad but it could be a little bit better um and then the third group again not terrible but could be better um i was shooting these laying prone and with the way that this stock is set up shooting prone with this thing is very very difficult because there is no cheek riser on it and it's very hard getting a good cheek weld and actually still having a good line of sight or you know good line of sight through the scope for me so it was really kind of a pain in the butt i would have done better had i just sh shot it off a bench but again i ended up shooting it prone because i wanted to know what that felt like and i didn't get the greatest results but i did get this one last group it was a five shot group here and it actually 
looks pretty dang good. I ended up with four holes in the target, but it was five rounds total, so not too bad. This is the width from center of hole to center of hole. We're looking about 1.12 inches, so it's not too bad. It's shooting a little over one minute of angle, um, and I plan on get, doing some more testing with that, maybe get it a little bit lower than that. But if I can get it to one minute of angle shooting these FMJs, because the ammunition I'm shooting again, by the way, is this cellular and bellet tactical ammunition, and it's the 140 grain FMJ. So it's probably not the best thing for precision shooting, and especially coming out of an AR-10. But again, that is this is the ammunition that runs the best in this rifle so uh, hopefully maybe we can dial it in a little better in the in the future i do want to change the stock on it and go to something that has a cheek riser built into it for you know in case i wanted to really get into some long range shooting with this but again this is also a battle rifle uh having this really big <laughs> arc and you know six to 24 power scope on here is not the ideal thing that's really not the way i want to run this rifle and i really feel like this one to ten power scope is way more appropriate so i'm going to go ahead and take this arcing off and then i'm going to put that spur mount on there and start mounting up our lpvo all right guys so now we got this mounted up here and i use my wheeler torque wrench kit for torquing everything down correctly figured out how far forward I wanted to place this optic and looks like this is the area for me and it's actually not too bad it's still it's pretty balanced it's not too far forward uh, but I did want to place it the mount behind where the rail for the handguard and the rail for the upper receiver met so we didn't have any issues there so i wanted to leave it at least that far behind and it feels good to me great length of pull from my body and everything and plus the eye relief uh speaking of eye relief this scope actually has a pretty generous eye relief i believe it's three and three quarter inches or three three point seven inches of eye relief so it's pretty decent amount um of course, when you zoom it up on 10 power, you shorten that a little bit. I think you lose about a half inch of eye relief there. Uh, so, why did we want to get into having a 13 mil base or uh, for this setup? Well, this scope here has 29 mils of total elevation adjustment, right? So, most of the time that means that you will get or about half, about 50% of that is actual usable elevation range because with these scopes they, they may say hey it's got 29 mils of elevation well that really means it's got 14 and a half up and it's got 14 and a half down okay so you really got 14 and a half mils with this scope have usable elevation range but we can utilize the other 14 and a half mils or at least some of that range that's being wasted we can utilize some of that by using a uh, canned base one that already has some elevation built into it so here i have a 13 mil base which means my total usable elevation range for this setup will be 27 and a half mils total okay so how far will that get me well i've already done the math on this and with the 16 inch barrel setup and running those 140 grain fmjs at about 2600 feet per second average and they've got a g1 ballistic coefficient of 0.548 so uh, all that considered, you run the ballistic data on it with this scope setup, it will get me to about 1,625 yards. So it'll get way on out there. Now, shooting that far with a 10 power scope, of course, is kind of a pain in the butt. But if you've got really nice, high quality glass, really 
clear glass it actually can be easier to see the target with a lower powered scope than with a higher powered scope and a lot of people don't realize that and of course early on in my shooting I always thought that having a more more powerful magnifying scope was going to allow me to see the target better but actually the reality is is sure you can buy cheaper you know three four hundred dollar scopes that have really high magnifications but the glass quality is so poor that at real high magnification you actually get a less you know you get less image quality than you would with a lower magnification power with higher glass quality and so I've really gotten into these uh, lower magnification ranges but with utilizing higher quality glass and so forth so even with this 1 to 10 power scope uh, here I should still be able to not you know should not have any problems hitting at a thousand yards or even further with this um, again it's shooting about a little over a minute of angle about one one and a quarter minutes of angle so basically that's about a 12 inch circle at a thousand yards that's still less than torso sized so that's more than enough accuracy if you know if you can hit 12 inches at a thousand yards with a, a AR-10 you're doing good so um, potentially I want to try to stretch this out and actually try to test its limits out there to uh, 1400 1500 maybe even 600 yards but you know it's getting into hunting season and unfortunately where we shoot at on that pipeline well it's in public land area so there are going to be hunters out there during this hunting season so unfortunately i'm not going to get to do a whole lot of shooting for the next few months uh probably you know after about february or march we'll start getting back out there and shooting some more but unfortunately for now i don't really have that option so anyways i just wanted to give you guys the rundown on this whole setup and let you guys take a look at it and tell me what you think it's the Athlon Ares uh, ETR 1 to 10 power in a spur mount a 13 mil mount so and it's on my custom built AR-10 65 Creedmoor anyways I want to thank you guys for watching and we will see you next time in the next video thanks